like to call the order of the special meeting of the Board of Commissioners. It's March of 2018. It's uh, 5 30 p.m. Uh, Joanne Clubs will call the roll, please. Sure. Uh, Commissioner Arms? Here. Commissioner Engel? Here. Commissioner Rollins? Here. Commissioner Vogelsang? Here. And Commissioner Wright? Here. Commissioners, uh, I know when changed the agenda, I'm informed that uh, Shannon Easter will not be here this evening. Please speak up. Shannon Easter will not be here tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, we sincerely apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll try to talk louder. I know it's uh, we don't have a microphone up here, and I'm not a very loud talker anyway. Um, under uh, <coughs> first order of business, uh, unless there's any other changes. Uh, uh, hearing none, uh, we'll get into our regular business, which is the. Uh, First order is the approval of golf course maintenance cost. And that will be done by uh, Melissa. Melissa. Do I have a number on here then? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, so commissioners, in your packet, I'll try to talk. In your packet, I've made a chart for you. We were able those four total quotes on here. I've separated them to the lower two, quotes three and four are from different departments within the city, recreation services and um, code compliance. Those two quotes. And, excuse me, for the members of the public, this merely is relating to the cost of maintaining the property as it exists today, cutting the grass, keeping everything the way it should be until such time as we start construction. So um, what we what we did is the bottom two quotes were the quotes that we got initially very quickly because we were concerned about how quickly to keep within code compliance um, and do our due diligence to stay within the code for uh, the city of Boca Raton. We were able to get two quick quotes because quotes from them because we already have a relationship with the city. So uh, Michael Calvert was uh, nice enough to give us a quote for the recreation services maintaining it. You'll see that's a very nice price. That is not a sustainable price for them. They've done that in the interim so that we can meet whatever purchasing guidelines and requirements we have to meet in order to get a long-term solution. So Michael has offered that, kindly offered that as a one or two month solution to the problem um, to bridge the gap if we have to go that route. Um, the reason why he could not offer that long-term is because of the staff, um, the stress it puts on the staff and then not just not having the equipment to maintain that kind of a property for a long-term period. So, um, and then the city, the code compliance, we had asked them to give us, a, their, they had um, sent us a note saying that if we could not uh, get it mowed um, in a timely manner, that they would be happy to find someone and do it for us. We asked them to get a quote, just because once again, we already have a relationship with the city. So that would help us with our um, purchasing procurement requirements. Um, but we were able to get the two quotes above. So we do have two competitive quotes right now to maintain the course as is right now. Um, and you'll see those on there. Uh, the Termy Landscaping came in at $4,500. It's $4,500. I make that mistake. You'll see. Uh, I did. I gave you the wrong one, but you'll see their quote on very on the very first page. So it's $4,500 is their quote. That was my placeholder because they were the last people to hurry up and get their quote in. He told me it was going to be around $5,000, but it was $4,500. And then South Florida Bush Hog Service is a company that is currently maintained or has been maintaining it for the bank. And their quote is $4,200. Commissioner's discussion. What is the admin cost for $550 on uh, Florida Bush Hog? There is no, Florida Bush Hog only has a, you were probably looking at the city's quote. That's the city of the co compliance. That co compliance added at $550. And if you go to their quote, which is quote number two, they don't have that admin cost because they're quoting it directly to us. It just so happens since they were already the entity that maintained the property, when we asked code compliance to get us a quote, they knew that. So they just called them up and got their quote and added a 550 administrative fee onto it to pass on to us. Questions? Um, for how long? Uh, well, we have, have to pick a golf course architect, and I imagine this code until construction begins. So what kind of time frame are we looking at? I'd say legitimately six to seven months. Okay. So really, I guess then, uh, for practical purposes, we have to throw out uh, the city's park and rec services offered 
to uh, maintain the property for two months because at the end of those two months, we'd, we're still looking at another four or five months. They simply offered that as a way to bridge the gap. If they, we weren't sure whether we were going to have to go out to bid or we could just quotes, and if we could get quotes when we could get people out there to give us the quotes we need. Mm -hmm. So they'd offered that as an interim until such time that we could do our procurement process properly. So they'd rather us not use that for Correct. two months? Right. Yes, but they want to be very helpful. So if it's needed, okay. they're there to well, offer it. Much appreciated, Michael. Um, so basically what it comes down to is quotes one and two. Yes. Anybody here to make a motion? Um, I move to choose that we select and approve either. Uh, no, be specific. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it took all the fun out of it. Um, I think are we are we not required to go with the low bidder? I'm, I'm uh, we are under a. A code violation warning from the city, so I'd almost consider this an emergent type of situation. So uh, I think it's in the best practice to go with the motor. And that's the other concern that's already maintaining the property right now. Yes, right? it is. So, your motions? Yeah, I would move to uh, to approve South Florida Bush Hog, sir. further discussion, Commissioners. Art. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I could make this contract with the May terminable after 30 days in the event that the work performed was not acceptable and we could replace them with somebody else. Okay. okay. Is that, do we need to amend the motion or just, no, uh, okay. just something to attract you? Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to accept South Florida Bush Hawk Services the maintenance uh, contractor to cut the grass at Open National say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign, passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Wilson. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, something that's going to be real easy uh, for us. Uh, <laughs> is uh, the ranking. And I, I would say to the commissioners, if you were examined it as, as much as I think you did, it probably was not easy to go through your selection process. And in some cases, uh, while the data there is objective, you may have some subjective uh, feeling about the, uh, the architects. Art, would you uh, care to give us uh, a little um, instruction uh, about what we will do? Because we decided at the last meeting to uh, select shortlist 10, uh, and, uh, 10 architects. Mr. Chairman, it's always been my position, especially in a situation like this where you're making uh, not only obj objective but subjective decisions, that you do, do so with the most information possible. That's why we took supplements to the original proposals, had two new ones, and my suggestion, we now have 17 uh, people who have submitted. And I think there's still room for additional information to be obtained. However, I think it's quite cumbersome to do that uh, by asking all 17 to come in and talk to us. So my suggestion is for you as a board, through your ranking process to get down to eight or ten uh, firms that you all can agree <coughs> on by the top eight or ten. Call them back in for a uh, maybe a one-time uh, meeting because at this point an extra week or two uh, is not going to make a whole lot of difference and it may provide you with uh, the benefits that we don't recognize currently. So as you rank one through 17, which I think you've probably done, and Brianne puts them up on the board, I would take the top eight or top 10, and uh, if you can agree on that, advise those people that they have made that shortlist, set a time up 
so they can come back in, talk to you, and you can ask them some questions, possibly even visit some of the sites that they have done locally, which you may or may not have had the opportunity to do, and I think it would provide you with more information upon which to make this uh, very important decision. Mr. Uh, Hart's proposal uh, 8 to 10. Uh, I, I was hoping for something smaller number than that, but... Uh, well, maybe as you get into your rankings and <coughs> as we get up on the board, you will find you have a consensus for the top six. Okay, well, um, then we can just... Then we can look at the numbers and decide uh, um, sure, and, and let's, I don't want you, the, the audience, just to see numbers on the board. Each commissioner is free to comment on why and how a particular firm was put in a particular ranking, uh, if they so desire. So the, if you look at the matrix going across, it would be the person on the far right column with the least number of points, which would be the highest ranked firm. So I'd say, you know, look for, if you can come to a consensus on six, if you came to a consensus on one, then maybe you save yourself some time, but I don't think it would hurt you to do it one more time. We're not looking, we can't see the entire list of 17. Yeah, we're getting in front of you. Steve, you can sit right up front of you. Yeah, all right, we got to see it. It is coming out from the screen. We'll go to the whole room with the whole yes. It's with the maple from the trees. So if you'd like, I can start. Just um, give you a framework. And some of, a lot of this kind of goes back to what do you really want in the golf course? And the biggest factor for me in, in looking at all this stuff, I went through what was recommended earlier on the different charts, um, you know, what our procurement responsibilities are for the code. And first and foremost, which most people should be aware of, is that we cannot pick on um, price because we don't have price. We didn't ask a price. <coughs> Um, we know that certain uh, architects are more expensive just through various um, you know, knowledge of, of talking to different property owners or golf courses. Some are, we know that the Nicholas Design Group is going to be certain, if you want a signature course, they charge more. If you want uh, different features, will add up quickly. And the question when we had Nicholas, and I'll use them as an example, is um, how can we afford you? I asked them specifically that question, and he said they would adjust their price accordingly they wanted this business. So I don't know whether they will ever come in on the price or not. So I disregarded all factors related to price, so then I focused on the other elements that are important to the community, or to, in my mind, that I thought was important. So quickly, the most one of the top ranked things was team. They had a complete team. We talked a lot about whether they had a uh, landscape engineer, um, irrigation, all, all, I looked at the different people who, architects proposals who sent in a complete team and so I gave more weight to that. I gave a stronger weight to creativity because we don't know what we want. So if someone has a design that is more creative that was going to make this thing functional, I thought that was important. Followed by a, a budget and planning. I saw all the budgetary planning, we haven't seen that in all of these firms. Some were better at than others, but I gave them ranking. Um, Saab, I felt, did a better job of saying this is the financial impact of what they thought would come through. And then I, I do think a local presence is important. <coughs> local presence being if you've built um, golf courses in Florida, you're available in the area, and then you're going to be here on a regular basis. And the other two areas that I thought were equally important was um, community engagement. This is just a start process, and so we're going to, whoever the architect is designed, we're not saying right now it's 18 holes or 27 holes. We're going to have a community engagement. We're going to come back and put some financial numbers to the whole thing, what's sustainable, what their costs are, um, 
And in that same theme, I, re I really did value sustainability and environment. If an architect was coming through with ideas for how they would make that course, one, so it's maintained at a lower cost, and it was sustainable, and that if they could go forward. And I like having a LEED certification building. I think it's important. I know there's an extra expense for it, but I think that's something we as our community should do, and that was presented well on So I went through and ranked all of the architects accordingly, and then I weighted them and came back with the scoring. So in the scoring that I came up with, some of the larger firms came out higher. And I don't, it, it's contrary to the, the Boca Golf Group, because they had a complete team. You know, early on, they would take Hill and Forrest, for example. I thought that Hill and Forrest was a good, solid financial firm. They would be inexpensive. They would do a great job. But they didn't have a complete team. And I didn't see the commitment that others had. So I valued the other ones higher. All of this is ignoring price. So we can't, it's hard to go in and ignore price. So that's where the rankings kind of fell out. Um, but as we've said all along, I think if you pick any one of these top 10 teams, you're going to be fine. Greg, I, I think you're spot on with uh, your analysis. And s same with me, the, the sustainability and the maintenance uh, the community engagement, uh, the being a, a member of ASCGA, I think was important, but it was not critical. Right, and uh, I did rate that as well. Yeah. I, I get so you got it was an automatic five points if you were rated at ASG. Not that they're the end all of everything, but I do think there's value to certification. Right. I, I mean, yeah. the, the thing that I thought was critical too is, uh, and there was mention. Uh, with one or two contractors about who would be doing the shaping of the greens. Yes. And I thought that was a very important factor in the discussion and the rating that I uh, gave to these uh, architects as well. Uh, but it was, uh, the, the more I went through this, uh, the, the more some of these things came out and more I realized that we needed to have uh, subsequent uh, interviews with these to answer some questions that occurred to probably you and to me right. during that process. And especially since we're not uh, under the, uh, don't have the ability to, to do a price, uh, but the ability of some of these contractors had to put together a really effective cost analysis uh, and, and a projection of their planning. Uh, there were some that stood out over the others. That's right. So, uh, uh, commissioners, what, what, I'm, what I asked uh, Melissa and uh, uh, Joanne to do is to go there and give us the top 10 uh, right away so we can see where we are. But you know that might be a good place to start. Uh, is uh, uh, take the top ten and have. Uh, can you just can you <laughs> sort that out? Give me the blackout. The ones that are the just the Just be, can you just do the um, descending water in the column on the off far right? We'll just double check them real quick. And then it should just yeah do that. I've got the numbers here if you want to uh, uh, I'll read these out to you uh, and let's okay. Jack Nicholas, so it would be 11, but uh, he had 49 points. So, number 10, the last person in the 10th place would be uh, the facts and. Uh, well, let, let, let's, before we do that, are we reading the same number that's on the handout? Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 see those, uh, Bryce Staples, uh, Jen Belgen, Richard Mandel, Vincent Design, uh, MF Golf, Mark McCumber, Deuce Berry, Reese Jones, Matt Swanson, and uh, Kyle Friend would be the last. So I'm going to save it so we can go print it for you. Okay. Great. So uh, Brian's uh, going to go print that, uh, print that for us. Um, I, I guess the... Uh, the issue is, uh, do we go forward with that? Do you want to try to uh, convince somebody else to change their rating? Uh, 
you want to have a discussion? Well, or if you wanted to condense the list from 10 down to 8 or 10 down to 6. <laughs> well, um, there are people that I think we should talk, that personally I think we should talk to, that are in the top ten uh, that wouldn't be in the top six. Um, I don't have a problem, I don't think, with, uh, real, except for uh, uh, the top one. Um, but I'm willing to go along with the consensus because I'm kind of like out of the ordinary here. Um, See what I just, <laughs> um, I, they just didn't impress me. I mean, it, it's it's a personal and there's yeah, there's it's no very right, subjective. There's no yeah. right or wrong. Yeah, even uh, with uh, the criteria that Craig gave us, it's there's still you know a certain amount of subjectivity. You know, I don't know, maybe it was the shirt he wore that day, I don't, you know. Yeah. Um, well, you know, following those guidelines that we had from uh, ProLink, some of those ideas played into what Craig and I were talking about, and that's, yeah. you know, uh, the, the things that were important, you know, the sustainability, the, the community engagement. Uh, we didn't talk about it, but uh, we heard a lot about playability. Yeah. Uh, right. And I uh, think that, that was important. But yeah. there's a consensus, most everybody was saying the same thing. We wanted not to be too hard uh, for the uh, average golfer and wanted mm -hmm. it not too easy for the low handicapper. Yeah. Uh, Art, would you? Uh, I, well, let me, let me just ask a question. <clears throat> and again, it's hard to see it this way. <laughs> Usually I'm good at that, but not to me. As I look at the far right-hand column, I mean rank the firms beginning with the number one ranking. The, rank, the number one ranked firm pursuant to this calculation would be the price Fazio team. Now, just let me ask questions. I'm not trying to influence anybody, but just ask a question. I'm not trying to influence anybody, but I'm just trying to ask a question. Is there, or are there members of the board, because you have technically complied with the law, but are there members of the board that would rather see firms more than just the top ranked firm come back to you for a question, answer, and presentation process? Yeah. <coughs> Anybody besides Steve? We need to be one here from them again. Exactly correct. Yeah. And if so, how many of those people would you like to have come back? And are you comfortable with inviting back uh, the top table? information from the top ten. Well, since there's a tie between eight and nine, you would want to invite eight and nine back, I would guess. <coughs> if we're well, going to do the top me, eight. Let me put it this way. Do you want to invite, do you want to say I'm ranked number one? Or do you want to say I want a short list to Three, I want a short list to four, I want a short list to five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Are, are we able to make the selection that we wanted to tonight? You have complied with the law. Okay. Let everybody speak up. I, well, I, 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 
much myself, I've been through this enough to where uh, if, if, if it's a commission wishes to uh, interview others, I would cut the list to uh, five. Uh, mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would go with my number one selection and make that decision tonight. Well, uh, as much as I would like to make the decision tonight, if my feeling is if we took the time to, to reopen the RFP, um, because we wanted to do this right and make sure we got the biggest bang for our buck, uh, I would rather take a short list and have five or six or whatever the pleasure of the majority of the board is to come back and represent. And I think at this point, we know based on the information we've gotten from the public and from, uh, from experts, I think we know somewhat more about what we're looking for or about what we should be looking for than we did at the outset. So maybe it would be a good idea to have these people come back in and, and talk to us once more and, uh, and immediately thereafter, maybe not at that meeting, but maybe at the following meeting, make our decision. Well, let us see that uh, I didn't hear anybody else say anything, so I'm going to ask you to make a motion. If you get a second, then uh, uh, and it may be that your motion you make uh, may be too comprehensive in numbers, but let's get a motion out there to be voted. Okay, I move that uh, uh, we agree on a short list of uh, candidates for our golf course architect to come back and uh, make another presentation in front of the board. Find your short list, please. Okay. Well, <clears throat> I was hoping there would be a hat here. <laughs> um, uh, let's just say five. T taking the top five. Okay, so the motion is, commissioners, is that we cut the short list to five and bring them back for uh, uh, interviews and uh, from that make the decisions. Okay, so uh, the floor's up for you. need a second? It is fair enough to have five come back, the top five that we... Okay. Is that a second, Craig? No. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I thought I saw you. I want to talk. We want to talk about that. Okay. We can give a discussion. Okay. Yeah, this is a discussion. Well, we need a second first. Um, I mean, I, I would be okay with that. Mostly only top five, so I'm happy with that. Um, and for them to come back and just in case we have any other questions, any other ideas that they had, and maybe. So that was a second. Yes. Okay. Sorry. So let's open for discussion now. Go, um, go ahead, Erin. You're on the road. Would it be? <laughs> um, and for the, I know, I know it's hard probably for them to get their teams to come to um, whoever's on the team. Um, so we can ask them whatever question we have as well. You know. um, and then, if, sorry, if the public has any questions, for them, I don't know if that would be something that would be. I have to turn to our executive director and ask that question. Or that would be well, we have provided the public opinion, public comment at the last meeting, mm -hmm. which is a requirement of the law that public comment be taken before a final decision is made. There's nothing wrong with hearing from the public again before, before you do it, before you even tonight. You could open it up to people. Uh, if, if, but uh, again, we're not, no one is here tonight saying pick firm A, B, or C. <coughs> and I would hope the public is likewise not going to get up and say pick for A, B, or C. They have comments on the process. I think it would be appropriate. Okay. Great. I'm not sure what you're going to get by having them back. So, I mean, it, we're, in this process, we didn't give them clear direction. We, got, we asked them, here's, we gave them a general concept of what we wanted. We talked about a learning center. We asked them to develop a team. We asked them to do uh, certain things. So I think we got a lot of the basic information, and they were able to demonstrate. You know, this is top five, the top ten demonstrated to me um, they could cover many aspects and do the job. So in the normal process of, of what we've done in the past, it sounds like 
you focused, we haven't even talked about the price, which still to me is the most important thing, as well as the, um, the overall cost of playing for residents and the financial aspect of running a golf course. Much of that is kind of, some showed a little better, stronger view than others, um, but we haven't gotten into that conversation, and I don't think we can. Even if we, if we can't get into that conversation right now. So what I'm thinking is a process, is you have two options. Yes, we can invite whether it's five or three back. Have them give us another pitch. I don't know what's going to be different to say you're it or not, um, because we still haven't got to cost. And I'm afraid we're spending a lot of time on that when I'd rather have Mr. Koski go back and talk to these two folks and get a better feel for can he get agreement with them and then bring them back and say, is, there, is it worthwhile? Well, look at what you're mandated to do. The process is intended for you to select, in this case, the most qualified in your opinion, given the factors that you've considered, the most qualified firm to perform the work for you. As I said at the last meeting, we're not here now to tell anybody what type of golf course right. we're going to build. That is going to be a function of the interaction with the architect as we begin the process. But before we begin that process, we have to negotiate with that firm for price. Either because way. if your number one firm said, aha, I'm number one, I got it, my price is $12 million for design, you're on to number two. Right. And that's why the law mandates that you have a minimum of three in your final ranking so that number one realizes, unless the price is agreeable, there's two other people standing behind it. So if we followed the process that we've done before, just alternatively, is that you were to go back and talk to them um, and say we, we picked the, the top one, and you would ask them what their proposal was for some near, more details. Um, and you ask for more information and you've got a price. I'll, I'll give you an example. Okay. The best, the better example. It's obvious, obviously very premature to determine what the cost of construction of the golf course <laughs> itself may be. Okay. Likewise, it is premature to say what will the total cost of the clubhouse be? Because you don't know what you're going to build. But it is not necessarily premature to enter into a discussion with, say, the architect part of the team right. to say, what is the cost per square foot of your design going to be for the clubhouse? Is it going to be Eight dollars, nine dollars, is it going to be 35, is it going to be 85? <coughs> Those are types of questions and answers you can get into to come up with some general understanding of where you will be in costs. Likewise, a firm can give you a minimum based on their uh, normal business practice may tell you we do not take on a project unless our minimum fee is seven hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars. So when do we do that? When, when, when? Right after you you rank no more, <coughs> no less than three people, meaning one, two, and three. Um, I mean, that's valuable information. That, that's what I'm looking for. So, what's it going to cost? Uh, some kind of indication. And you know, once we get, if you get comfort level on that aspect of it, I think you still have to, you know, someone has to go through that discussion with them to say, are we all in the same ballpark? And then it, 
then it becomes back to the questions of the three, whether it's three or five, it doesn't matter to me. But, but keep in mind, this is not going to number one saying, what is your price? Right. Then going to number two saying, what is your price? And number three, and then comparing all three. You negotiate with number one. If you cannot reach it and agree to find negotiation, you go to number two. And likewise, if you can't reach with two, you go to number three. But it, you, we always are going to do that where you do that part of it, no matter whether we do it today or whether we do it after all five come in to interview. That is absolutely correct. So in my mind, we picked one there. Um, I would say get started. But you have to have a minimum of three. We got 17. I don't want 17. I want, I want a minute. I want, I'd like you to, to bring it down. I mean, if you want to read, leave this as a, the ranking. To me, that's, that's the, the ranking is good. I'm good with the ranking. But I, I go back. We need, we got to get let you do your part of the process. Then I, I want. I think we have to give them direction once after we select them. Right. And that selection is like, look, you're going to have. What are you going to do for the community? How are you going to get us engaged and bring everyone involved? If we want to hear how many times are you doing? Charrettes, all that kind of stuff. And they'll be up at that microphone. There's everybody. a lot of time here to be spent that's got to go forward with designing the course, designing the clubhouse, all those things. Right, uh, but we want to make sure that we get yeah, the right one. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. And one of the things that we can do at a subsequent meeting is maybe distill down to a few questions, like, like you would do at a second or third interview where you have a smaller, a smaller group of candidates for a specific position. So we could do that. If we do that, what are you expecting to get out of this? It's different than what I'm. What I'm expecting to get out of it is a better sense. First of all, right now we know a lot more about this than we did when we first uh, when we first met these people. Okay, a lot of what we have here is based first on the the mandate that we're given, and also our our personal impressions. <coughs> Excuse me. Our personal impressions of the candidates. Okay, um, some of these impressions vary a little bit. Uh, what I would like to do is ask them specific questions, much like I would do on a second or third interview, that uh, distill down for us where you know, like uh, Mr. Kosky said, maybe questions specific to the clubhouse, questions specific uh, to. Uh, uh, how they would handle certain aspects of, of construction, community involvement, availability, right? Things more specific responses, right? So, in other words, for availability. And, and can we do that via um, paper? Give the list of questions to them, and that they respond. Let, let me jump in here uh, yes. to uh, Craig because I, 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 I fall on the same side of where you're coming from. Is that? Um, I, I went back and looked at uh, the videos of the wounds that were recorded. Uh, I, I looked at my notes uh, from that, those meetings. I went through their uh, <coughs> procedures, their, uh, their uh, proposals that they went through. Mm -hmm. uh, there, by the time I got through doing this the last uh, couple of weeks, I came to the conclusion that there was nobody else that I wanted but the person that I selected as number one. I didn't. Uh, uh, there was really no close second for me. Uh, oh. But anybody in the top three that we have up there today, I, I'd be comfortable with without even doing another interview. Uh, because there's a lot that, we, that we're that we gonna need to uh, have input with them, whether they, they've all addressed community engagement. They, they all pretty much, uh, not all of them, but, but I, I know uh, my selection uh, did indicate the, their availability. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, on my Craig, I'm not sure what more I'm going to get out of uh, the discussion other than asking the same questions that we've already asked and have answered to. And it, between the proposals that they gave to us, the videos and the interviews, I, I, I'm comfortable with the choices that I made. Well, and you don't think they might have some more information to give us as feedback after they had their presentation and after they read like the other proposals? proposals from the other, 
you know what I mean? Like, like I didn't get a big thing on sustainability from Price Fazio, but now that we've asked questions on it and they might think it's a bigger deal, they might have some more information for yeah. us. Or, uh, I, I don't know. I just and, and the sense that I got, yeah, first of all, these, these guys are experts in what they're doing, and so when, when we address uh, sustainability, I, I think they know how to do. Well, ask for it. The one question that I, I you know. Uh, didn't see, and I'm not sure. I was hoping to hear Shannon Easter when I was talking about the Ottoman uh, issue because I, I thought that was important that we you know, be be here. Uh, so, you know, we we can talk about this as much as you want, but I think we ought to uh, call a question on it. Here's you have your impression, for example, of Price Fazio. Mm -hmm. I rank them toward the bottom because I didn't feel that <clears throat> that sense that they were going to going to engage the community. And I didn't, I didn't feel also that on the subject of sustainability, they were on a par with some of the other candidates, which is why I ranked them as low as I did. Okay, there were other things that, uh, that uh, where they stood out, no doubt. Um, but on questions of sustainability, on uh, questions of community involvement, Things like uh, things of that nature. I don't think it would hurt us if we distilled this down to five, to the top five, had them back again, and and you know and drill down a little deeper. Yeah, well, I think what you're going to find when uh, when they view the comments of the meeting that I know what the answers are going to be to those questions. Uh, uh, but Sue, what about you? Well, I was going through my notes on Chris Lazio, and they do cite the environment. They do uh, cite that they want community involvement from, uh, and they w are willing to listen. So uh, I think that we're on the right track. Uh, when I went out with Michael uh, to the Boca Municipal and talked to the golf course superintendent, or the maintenance person, I asked him, who would you pick on all these? And two of them are on the top top three of our choices right here. Uh, but that they hand build their courses, that they are on on site, and they build a good, uh, a good course, a maintainable course. So I'm good with this, uh, our first three choices here. So let's bring the motion to a vote and the government votes. Uh, then there's a motion on for what is the motion? Uh, I'm, I'm going to repeat the motion. Uh, uh, Joanne, did you write down the motion? <laughs> Steve had a motion to um, agree on a short list of five, down to five, um, to come back and present to answer any questions. And I thought Aaron seconded it. But she did. Okay, commissioners, you heard the motion. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, light sign. Motion uh, fails. Uh, would someone else care to make a motion? I make a motion that we proceed with the um, initial discussions with the top uh, five. Is off Mr. Pick, the, uh, Mr. Koski would urge them and work through the best contract you could. If you can't get arrangements with them, we will come back to the next one, and the next one, as normally would, and upon completion of that, they come and present to this board. Mm -hmm. uh, and you so make sure I'm clear on that, uh, Craig. What you're saying is that uh, select the top five votes. Uh, the number one person on that list would be negotiated uh, with Mr. Koski for a fee. And we can't get a fee. Whatever the normal course of business right. is, not just fees, it's whatever the normal course of business is. If you can't come to an agreement on that one or get that comfort up, he'll go to the second one. Right. He'll go to the third one like he normally would. Um, I'm not going to go from number one to number two without coming back and telling you that. Okay. Okay, well, that's fine. Okay. Uh, would it, would it, can, I mean, in that same spirit, right? No, I'm trying to, this is a long motion, so I may time out on the motion. Um, but can we have someone assist you? Absolutely. Okay, so I mean one board member assist them. Absolutely. And, you know, whoever else we, we choose, I think it's important. Go through that, all that discussion, then bring it back to the board. 
Karen, you got a question? Your thoughts? I'm just thinking maybe we should get some public input on this before it's all voted on. That's a good, that's fair. First of all, let's, uh, there's a motion on the floor. Yeah. There's a motion on the floor. No, I think I withdraw my motion. I, I agree with the parents. So let's get some public input. Okay. All right, shall we uh, open it up? Sure, open the public. Okay. Uh, as a normal protocol, if you'll come up to the microphone, give your name and address for the record, and then uh, we're welcome to your comments. Successful golf academy at Ocean Breeze for about nine uh, or about maybe seven or eight years before it closed. So we have a lot of experience and knowledge and familiarity with the property. And we also now operate a very busy academy at Osprey Point, which is sort of a you know, exemplary facility that I know that, that many of us are familiar with. So I'd like to offer our expertise and background and um, experience at any you know with any uh, facet of this for the design of the course or for the design of a teaching and learning facility or whatever that may be um, and also i'd like to my observation in looking at the results here is that with one exception the the top firm is far and away above the other firms in your rankings. And rather than bring all these firms back in and take more time, if there were specific questions that could be clarified or asked of that one firm, the Price Fazio, that might satisfy, I think it was uh, Commissioner Engel, it was your concern, right? If uh, a short phone call or a discussion would satisfy some of your concerns on the sustainability or on the willingness to work with the public, if that changed yours, it would be far and away top ranked firm. Because we have a one, a one, a two, and a, and a three. So. For the record, um, you know, uh, it's not the first time that my ranking has been, um, shall we say, different than the rest of the board. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, uh, I believe in, you know, everybody should march to the beat of their own drummer. Uh, sure. But, um, as far as the questions go, if it's the consensus of the board to go with Price Fazio, then so be it. Okay. My feeling is we should have a short list of five. If that's not the feeling of the majority of the board, then we go with the majority of the board. And so, you know, as far as that's concerned, you know, it's whatever, uh, whatever their the consensus is, of course. Thank you. Anyway, um, available for any assistance or uh, background help, whatever you might need. Can you help me with my action? <laughs> <laughs> <I> definitely can. <laughs> Thank you. In the process, if you would confine your uh, talk to five minutes uh, or less, appreciate it. So don't bring a chair up here? <laughs> no, don't bring a chair, Rick. Um, Greg Delanis, 1780 Parkside Circle, South Boca. Um, thank you again, all you guys. Um, my group, the Boca Golf Association, uh, have read all 17 proposals. We've met um, multiple occasions, probably 12, 15 hours. And, and the process that you're doing, we've kind of mirrored it. Um, and my hat's off to you guys. This is a very difficult decision to make. Um, but it's our belief that um, we need to shorten the process. I think getting five people back here, um, but prior to that, defining what it is that we want. No hotel, hotel. Golf school, no golf school. Incidentally, um, we're in favor of Don Law Golf School. 
as opposed to, uh, I think, uh, the price one that's up the top of the list has the lead better academy. Um, but um, anyways, I think it's important to bring five back rather than negotiating with one. Uh, and again, the time between now and then, define exactly what we want and tell them and have them come back with specifics and ask any, any final questions. Um, that would be our suggestion to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I was just going to say, but we can't really tell them what we want because we don't know what we want yet exactly because we haven't had our community charrettes with the architect in charge of <laughs> the de designing the course. Do you know what I mean? Like, I could say what I want, and you could say what you want, but we haven't really come together and had a charrette to really come to the realization of exactly what we want. We have 230 golfers that play this golf course every week, and we can tell you pretty specifically what it is that we want. If you guys want to take that and listen to it, or add other people's opinions to it, prior to selecting an architect, I, I think it makes good sense. That's where your base customers. I mean, we get so many emails from different people saying they want this, they want that. We get emails from you saying you want this, you want that. So it's hard to say, as a community as a whole, exactly what we're looking for. So, so we're the people that play the course. The people, the other people you're referring to, ask them how many times they've ever played both community. Ask them if they're part of that community. Ask them if they are part of the league. Do they play all year long? Do they play in the summer? Do they play three days a week? Do they spend money in the pro shop? No, I, I yeah, I, I, and I totally get that. It's just hard to tell the architect right now exactly. I, I just. Yeah, I think uh, Aaron's got a point, Greg, and I, and I play Boca Muni. I'm not playing every day. I wish I could, like Angela does. Uh, uh, but, uh, they play too early. Yeah, but I, I think it's it's bigger than, we're looking at the entire, entire Boca community, and uh, we want to go into the charrette with a clean palette, and, and then they come away with your ideas, your golf group, and the ideas of anybody else that uh, might play or has played, uh, plays golf. I, you know, I think there's others that we want to hear from just as and just as important as uh, your group so not I, I i think aaron's got a good point we don't know really we don't really know what we want to do with the hotel property i don't uh, uh, it may be something that we might want to sell we might want to keep it uh, for uh maybe that's a side of the uh, clubhouse I, I just don't know and, until we have a charrette and talk to people about what they want uh, I mean, we've heard 27 holes, we've heard 18 holes in the Learning Center, uh, and, you know, we want to do what the majority of the community wants to do, and, uh, and I think that's what Aaron's trying to say, is that we can't really put our hands around. I, 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 I agree. agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, so, uh, with that said, Angela, uh, you had the floor. Uh, oh. Sorry, I, I should have brought you a chair over there. That's okay. <laughs> I mean, last time I got off the subject, so. Okay, well, no, you did go. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, again, thank you. I, this has got to be so difficult, okay? But I, I would like to, you know, I think we're trying to get into specifics, but I do think we need to, again, base everything on criteria. And, you know, last week uh, or two weeks ago when we met before, Greg mentioned something that only seven had a third golf course missing, you know, I mean listed as far as the, the 17 proposals. And, and that just, you know, and, and I'm glad he, he mentioned that because when he said that, I, I started thinking and I said, this, this, is, this doesn't make sense. Because if you look at the two most uh, profitable commercial public golf courses within 20 miles of where we're sitting, one is Osprey and two is uh, Deer, Deer Park. Deer Creek. Deer Creek, okay. One's a private, one's a public, but uh, private as far as ownership, the other is a muni, uh, municipal uh, Both of those courses have the same three things, golf, real good golf, uh, really nice practice facility, and decent restaurants, you know, and Osprey is, and so I was kind of, I, I didn't quite understand, I just said, you know, this doesn't make sense when the two biggest public golf courses in our area these are the things that they're functioning on. And yet, when, we, when we've when listened to all 17, 
uh, we're, we're hearing all kinds of stuff, you know, when the winners are just using those three. So I said, I'm missing something. You know, when you don't understand something, then it's time to do some homework. And so I, you know, I got the request for proposals, and I read it, and rewrite it, and write it, and rewrite it, and then it hits, you know, like that. And it's just what you have said today. There aren't any specifics here. You know, it's all generalizations. Uh, so, you know, what we did with architects is they come in, and they're, you know, it's like a flashlight. And you beam it up against the wall, you can make the beam very tight or very broad. And what we did with the architects is we said, bring in a broad flashlight. So they're bringing in everything. I mean, who wanted to build a commercial thing there? Who wanted, you know, I mean, a lot of the ideas are really good. Bees, and I mean, they're great. But, you know, these, you know, any time you add something to this, for example, any time you add a facility, who's going to pay for it? You know, to me, the whole key in all of this was to create an affordable place to play golf. And every time we get away from the three things that contribute to revenue, then how that next thing is added has to be added by raising green fees or re raising practice range fees, okay, or charging another dollar for a hammer, okay? And so, you know, what I thought was important as far as criteria, what as far as this next step is concerned, is that when, when, you're, when you're talking to, to uh, Price, you know, is there, is there a par three, cannot make it on its own? Or are we gonna have to raise money from another one of our revenue sources to pay for that par three, okay? Can that learning center be on its own? Or, are we going to have to raise fees someplace else to pay for it? And I think those are the types of, of questions and criteria we need to, to look for because, again, I think all of us are in agreement that what we want is the best affordable golf course in Palm Beach County, maybe in the United States, okay? And, and I think that's the type of criteria we need, you know, I can't blame the architects for throwing all this stuff at them because, you know, with this, we didn't give them, you know, they were all hoping they could bring something in that was new and exciting and would catch somebody's eye, okay? So, again, I, I want you to know that how much I appreciate, I mean, this, this, the amount of work you all did for this was incredible, okay? And uh, I have no doubt, no doubt whatsoever that the final product is going to be fantastic. It's going to be fantastic, and it's because of everybody in this room. And uh, if you need help, you know where I'm at. Thanks, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Art. Let me just make one comment. Uh, we did do some preliminary homework, and it revealed that the city of Boca Raton was losing over 600,000 a year at the current Boca Muni Golf Course. <coughs> and they're losing over 250,000 a year at the current Par 3 at Redwood Park. We are not entering into this business venture to duplicate that process. Yes, it is important to keep the green fees as reasonable as possible. But if we want to have a facility that is new, enjoyable, playable, in order to keep those green fees low, there's got to be some other part of the revenue to increase in order to balance all of that out. And that's what we're wrestling with right now. It's not an easy process. It's a difficult process. It is subjective. And we hope that as we get into it with a selected architect, we can start talking 
more specifically about some of those problems and some of the criteria that you have asked for. You know, I did some research myself last night. Uh, do, you, do you know the name Perry Maxwell? Anybody here know who Perry Maxwell? What's what's Perry Maxwell fam uh, famous for? Anybody know? Coffee. No. <laughs> <laughs> he designed Augusta. Yes, he did. He's the original designer for Augusta. Not the redo, but he was the original designer. Is he the original? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think. Uh, he and Arnold are at the same place. But, but it is a very difficult type of situation. We want to make this a local facility for local people, including local universities, local high schools, junior program. We need to know some of these things, and we're hoping that rather than asking 17 different people for 17 different opinions, that we get and sit down with one, uh, selected in the appropriate process to meet the law, and then try to uh, come up with the right idea. And there will be many of these meetings, I can assure you, with the public as we move through it. And that architect will be up here and to be put on the hot spot. So all we can do is try, but we don't want, we can't afford to subsidize, which this 850,000 a year in taxpayer dollars to duplicate what we have. Debbie Lysing, 6111 Northwest 4th Avenue, the uh, north course, uh, third fairway is in my, my backyard. So if anybody has a vested interest in this, um, I do. So again, I want to say thank you to um, the hard work of the commissioner and Mr. Kosky because what a daunting task. But um, I would agree to go forward. Uh, my idea would be to take the top five, start at the top, and see what they have to say as far as the price per square foot. What worked before, um, for 25, 30 years, um, in Bocatica was great having a clubhouse. You could go in, have breakfast before golf, or lunch after, or cocktail dinner. They had great events. Um, the social center on the other side was great. They rented that out. We have nothing in the city of Boca Raton that you can have a small event, um, a small wedding, um, birthday parties. They used to rent it out for bridge. If you're looking for something to help supplement in the off season, when we have low turnover, low rates of golfers, I would suggest looking at, at that aspect because it, it did work well for a while for Bogotica. And um, I would certainly have events there myself. I, I think that's something that's missing in the city. We can also do, do the bridge. I mean, Mahjong, there's so many things that people are looking to rent space for that we do not have within the city limits that um, I think would be very important. So again, I commend you and I'm really, um, ask you to implore that idea of making the um, southeast corner a community center, a facility that can have um, social events, whether you charge a fee to rent to use the space or to have a, a caterer there that you must use, but I think that would be another good source of, of income and the clubhouse should have a good source of, um, of food because that was very good for, for the golfers and even for the neighbors. We would walk down and go there. It was, it was just great for Thank you. Hello, Robert Ducate, uh, for the record, 5351 Northwest 3rd Terrace, Bocatica area. And uh, I have to agree with what a lot of Debbie said, uh, but also was very happy to hear Art talk about the uh, importance of the profitability. We have public records uh, readily available for municipal golf courses, and we all know what the most profitable municipal golf course is in Palm Beach County, Osprey. It, the National Golf Foundation study said they were gonna make about a million dollars based upon their demographics. 
Right now they're making almost $2 million. Granted, their, uh, their green fees aren't user friendly for the residents maybe, but uh, that is a profitable formula. 27 championship holes with the Don Law Golf School operating uh, within the overall facility. <coughs> I think that also uh, something that I saw coming in here tonight was nice, and that was the uh, you have this facility open for homeowners association meetings. Right now there are uh, over 16 homeowners associations within one square mile of the Northwest Second Avenue Jeffrey Street area, with no place to have a homeowners association meeting. So the use of a community facility, it could be a part of the country club. Maybe it's a room like this. That's fine. Uh, you, have, you can have golf or, or other things in that same building, of course. Uh, so I do agree with the idea of bringing back maybe uh, five. There are a lot of questions I know from myself to be a golfer uh, that I didn't hear people talk about, at least very few people talk about during their presentations. What kind of grass would they recommend? They recommend past palum, they recommend Tiff Eagle Greens, they recommend Bermuda, they recommend it all the way through. Jan Bell Jan, I think, was one that, a few that actually talked specifically about that. And the cost of that. I'm sure there's different costs uh, if you have Bermuda all the way through versus past Palum all the way through to Tiffigal Greens, to Bermuda Greens. These are all the type of details that I think the cost was never really discussed. Uh, the pictures look beautiful. You all played or were at uh, Broken Sound, which had Bermuda grass all the way through from tea to green, and maybe that's the best. I don't know, what's the cost of maintenance of that? Osprey uses uh, past pollen. Their greens are kind of rough, but, but they're getting the revenue. Maybe it's a matter of having past pollen grass versus uh, Tiff Eagle greens, uh, or past pollen fairways, Tiff Eagle greens. There's all these types of details, and a lot of it comes down sure, to money. I'm sure some are more expensive, maybe some uses more water or less water. Past Palum, I think, is better salt water resistant and things like that. Those type of details, I never heard uh, really that much detail from most of the, uh, uh, the presenters. So again, that's where I think that if you had people come in and talk about you know, their ideas on how they would uh, structure it and what the cost would be of these types of uh, specific <coughs> architectural designs that they might be recommending, uh, relative to the cost would be important. Thank you. Mark, so we can put this to, <clears throat> to forefront again. Ken, if we were to bring them in, could they discuss cost? Or would they, would they discuss individual <coughs> components of cost? Or, or would we be estoppel from getting into this kind we of conversation? Discuss, discuss with them potential costs of the improvement itself. <coughs> we cannot discuss their charges to us for doing the work. Okay. So if we come up with our questions uh, rather than to prolong this whole um, process and come to the next meeting and they would would they be able to have those answers to some of those costs, like the, the type of... Um, well, I think they could. I think they're all fairly confident to probably have them right at their fingertips as to what it would cost you per hole to do a, uh, a golf course. And, but again, let me say, I still think the board has a lot to consider and there's still a lot of input from the community. Are you simply going to rebuild Ocean Breeze? Or are you going to build a new facility at that location? And all of that, I think, has to be taken into consideration during the design process. We see that in every project we undertake with design. We have input with the architect when we built this uh, community center and the uh, uh, theater next door. We went through all of that. that. The first step of the process is to bring a professional on board who can give you that information and then you can have open discussions for it by asking them. 
Well, if you change to next type of grass, is your feed going to change? Or if we're going to relocate holes three through six, what's your feed structure going to be? Is it going to be any different cost to us? Because the cost of the designer is an integral part of the overall cost of the project. So your real first step is what you're doing now. It's trying to pick the most qualified person to do what it is you want to do with <coughs> their input, your own questions and input, but the input of the community and others. Thank you, Archie. Yes, sir. Uh, George Camillo, Boca Tico, kind of North West Second Avenue. Uh, I've been down there about a dozen years or so, played uh, Ocean Reef ever since uh, I've been here. And it was obviously broke my heart when it closed. But uh, I'm looking more for some information uh, than anything else. And I've been trying to follow how, I mean, I, believe me, I think people have uh, been doing a great job, but <laughs> it's a thankless job too. Uh, but I'm a little unclear about a couple of things. I know we came up with this list of 17, 18, whatever, uh, and I know there's a couple new operations there. I think Fazio is one of the new ones that just came in recently. But when we're when you're dealing with these, I'm kind of interested. Have we given them any type of criteria? How can they? My feeling is, how can they make some type of proposal? Unless we've given them some type of specifications, and I know the I know the um, general feeling from the last email uh, specified that uh, didn't specify, but it said that uh, it appears that most of the people are in favor of 27 holes of golf and so forth. I mean, it, these are opinions, and and, and uh, I tend to agree with a lot of them, but. Uh, if I'm working, say, for Nicholas or something, and I come and I say, I want to make a proposal, don't, have we been telling him sort of what we want? I mean, because everybody has to, when you go out for bids, as uh, you know, I mean, generally you give a, a set of specifications. I mean, to me, it's uh, somebody comes in and says, well, this is what I can do for you. I'm interested. Um, you can't really throw a price on it. Uh, you can't uh, give them some, you know, come out with some type of design when, you know, you don't know what uh, the general consensus of the of the uh, board is or which represent the people. So I'm a little unclear what good it's doing talking with these people. Uh, is it just generalities? Yes. Am I missing something? Yes. You're missing the fact that you're looking at five elected people who are lay people. I understand who are that. Not experts in the field of law. I understand that. And they have to talk to somebody who is an expert in order to get all of the ideas. The more people I okay. talk to, the more ideas there are. Here is a set of specifications right. to put artificial surface on the fields of Patchery Park. None of the elected officials could do that. They well, again, to, I'm looking for information. I don't know what to, what these... Uh, these what? people all responded to a proposal. Okay. We are uh, willing to be considered as potential designers right. for whatever is going to be done in the redo, restoration, rebuild, however you want to determine of what was known as Ocean Breeze. Right. And to give us the best information they can to make it a playable, sustainable, and financially successful project. Okay. Uh, again, of us sitting up here. Again, I'm just looking for information. Yeah. I'm a little perplexed as far as, you know, how you can... Uh, it, it, we, we, have, we have government in the sunshine. So we have to be here talking about this, and sometimes it does it does uh, expose, if you would, our lack of specific knowledge on subjects. But 
that's why we hired the experts. Well, I'm not uh, questioning any of that, uh, believe me, because uh, like I say, I think it's a thankless job. Uh, you know, you, you do your best and you know, you're know, you always gonna hear complaints from somebody. Uh, that's just the way uh, it's human nature. But the, so we're not at the stage yet of going out for any type of uh, formal bids. Oh no, we, we, the next step, first step is since there were architects, engineers, surveyors, landscape architects involved. Right. We have to follow a process to select what this board subjectively concluded to be the most qualified golf course architectural design team to do the work that ultimately would be done. Okay, so this could be, excuse um, me, this would be like step one, and then is, we're narrowing this, it down this is from step there. minus three. Right. So it's going to be quite some time before, or hopefully not, but before we get to the point of actually going out for bids. About seven months. To go out for, before we go out for bids. Yes, sir. All right, I'm just going for a time. I, mean, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks sir. My name is Harold Chaffee. I live at uh, 6200 Northwest Second Avenue. I just have to commend the commission on what they're doing so far. They, they, they are following the right process. The right process basically is to pick somebody that can actually complete the job. There's nothing to do with what the design looks like or anything. You have to make sure that these people are going to listen to you, do what you're supposed to be, but do what you want them to do. Okay? I think that basically, which was the original question before we started this, was basically I think you should bring back to five. Bring them back, bring their t teams back. Ask them the questions. There's a lot of questions that you probably have to ask them. We're not in a tremendous rush here. It's not like uh, you know, the world we have to decide tonight. We need to do this systematically. We have to do this logically. These people, they should be coming back with their teams. You should ask them more questions, get more familiar with them, get more confidence with the person that you want to work with, 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 with through the rest of this job. Right, and as far as the community, the community has to be involved. Everybody, not just golfers, but the people who live in the community, the people who live in the city. That's that's the most important thing. These charrettes have to happen. You know, we started this in the beginning for the for the city, for the people, for the residents. That's what we have to keep in mind. We have drifted a little bit. We always have dreams uh, dreams of grandeur. We want this. We want the you know Statue of Liberty here. We want this. You know, <laughs> somewhere along the line, we basically have to draw back. If it's a corporation, we have to make money. We have to think about what's going to make money, what isn't going to make money. And we're not, we don't want the golfers to pay for something that, that, that's a freebie for somebody else. The other thing too is I, I haven't walked the building in a long period of time. And I'm listening to all the things that you want to do and what the building should look like and so on and so forth. And I walked through the administration building, I walked through the hotel, and I walked through the one side of the property. And I, I said to myself, you know, if, if you were to draw a plan, this is exactly what you want. You don't want a 120 room hotel. There's a 40 room hotel on the site, right? If you renovated it, basically, I know you're probably very opposed to renovation, but I'm saying you, you've got a perfect model there. You know, the building is huge. You can hold anything you want. It's just a perfect, perfect building. You know, I, I don't know what the cost would be. I know it's a tremendous cost to probably demolish it but, and, and renovate it, but that would have to be worked out, I think. I think it's a perfect building for us. And, and we have two, and we're going back to basically surviving. You have two models right now. You have Osprey, which makes money, and you have Deer Creek. Deer Creek, and when I talked to them, they said they make more money in the w doing weddings than they ever make with the golf course. If they had nobody play golf, they would still survive. That's the secret to the whole thing. You know, you need a, you need a banquet hall, you need a place where people can hold weddings, you need something for the community. You know, and 27 holes you should have because basically you can hold events, you can, you don't have to shut the whole place down. To do a learning center and give them a whole East course, where's the return on investment? There's no return on investment there. You know, if basically, we've asked before a couple of learning, what, a learning centers, we said, if you had 27 holes, could you fit a learning center in here, just squeeze it in? He said, yes, definitely. We could do a, rev a reverse driving range. He said, we could basically take get rid of the tennis courts, build a learning center. Now, there's a lot of questions, a lot of, a lot of ways to different, you know, different ways to go here, you know? And then that's why, like I said, the people, charrettes, the city, everybody should be involved. You should bring the five people back, interview them again, get a good feeling. You have to get a good feeling to these people because they're going to be working with them for a year, two years, all right? And like, like I said, you guys are doing a great job.
David Sergi, 6661 Northwest 2nd. Once again, Harold is a hero to this community. Yes. Uh, to Aaron, you're a hero to this community. The only reason why there's a public comment is because of Aaron. My God, you're a hero. Run for everything. I'll vote for you every single time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the fact that we don't have a process of what to do today is absurd. You knew you were going to get these numbers, but nobody thought about what to do after there was a ranking. I, I've been here since 5.30, and we're all deciding, do we take the top 5, 3, 10, 17? Why don't we have a process of what to do today? You didn't know today was going to come? So what would you do? I would have planned for today about three months ago. What would you do right now? Listen to the public. I don't know, that's what I do. I would take probably the top five. We, uh, have, the to, we <laughs> have to follow the law. And the law is? Chapter 287.055. You should read it. What does it say? Come on, that's a good. It is the manner by which you select uh, consultants through a competitive negotiation process. It tells you what to do and how to do it. We do not have the ability to just run outside and pick a, a firm and say, you're our person. We can't do that. We have to advertise. We have to solicit. We have to rank. We have to rank. So what does it say what to do after you rank? There's then we have to negotiate. It's all in the law. And if you cannot negotiate the price with that number one firm, then you have to go to number two. Well, number three, you have to rank at least three. So there is a process. It was but there was no process by, of what to do today after you got the ranking, of sure, whether three sure. or five? No, it's just simply a question of will more information make it easier for you to make a decision in the firm that you ultimately select, which is to be selected as the firm who is the most qualified the most qualified to do the work. And that's objective. That's the objective. It and is. The sole objective to the law. 287.055. Interesting reading. Got it right here. Yep. <laughs> Interesting reading. Now, Art, let me just say this. We did come here with a plan. We, at our last meeting, we said we wanted to give, select 10 of the 17 and then shortlist, uh, shortlist the 17 to 10. And then from that point on, the discussion was, do we want to select the number one point getter, or do we want to uh, bring back uh, five of the top? And that's where we were stalled at that point, because we had a motion, it didn't pass. We had another motion, then we withdrew that so we could hear from the public, and that's where we are right now. So we're, we'll be making a decision one way or the other, uh, either bringing back the uh, five to interview them, or pick the number one uh, uh, architect. Oh. I, I'm, with the, I'm with the public. It seems like they want the top five. My opinion, as a resident, I think that's fair. I do think that the demeanor of what I've been witnessing since 530, my opinion is not the greatest. Uh, I think some people are talking down to each other. I don't know. I think the public has elected these certain people, and they should be respected. About 30 seconds ago, they were just all demeaned. I have an issue with that. I, I respect all of them. I. I from what I've witnessed, the attitude should be a little bit more positive. I know you guys have done a lot, but it's a, it's a bad reflection. Well, we've been through 17 interviews, uh, sir. I get it. And so we are very anxious to uh, move this to the next uh, phase. And if there's anybody that's been... You know, you guys have been through 17 interviews, but this community has suffered. For the, you know, they've been looking at dead grass for two years. So. And, and we, bailed, we bailed out that community by buying this property. Remember that. I disagree okay. that it was a bailout. That it was. Would you rather look at the grass for another five years? Or would you rather look at 500 new homes right. and, and seven or 800 cars yeah. and six or seven? I, I, I disagree there was a bell. When, you, when, you, when, when you're going to be able to turn this into a profitable golf course, it isn't a, a bell. Well, we, it will be a profitable golf course. We wouldn't have gotten into this if we hadn't, and we appreciate your comments. <coughs> Correct. So it wasn't a bell. <laughs> Well, it, it prevented from being developed. Lenar had the keys to that, uh, and, and they were going to wait it out. So, thank you. So, Mr. Chair, do you want to go to five? Do you want to start with the number one as you go and begin negotiations? Well, I'm, I'm, 
I'm not sure. You're not going to make that call. I'm going to let the uh, commissioners. And Steve had a motion to. Uh, uh, should I? Can I resubmit? Well, I didn't touch it. Yeah. Well, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, the motion was to feed. Are we able to uh, discuss that motion again, or? So we can bring it back. Make a new motion. All right. Yeah. So before we, we, we have to discuss it before or after. We can discuss it. Okay. So let's just make sure we understand our options. Okay. So if we go back to invite the five back, okay, that's one option. So if we invite, we have to pick a date. So and you're still going to do the rank. Then we're going to rank those five. So so we would go through, bring them back. So we're going to have them present and they can present, we're not giving them any direction. They cannot talk about their costs. They can talk about uh, cost is, of. I would, I would envision it as a question and answer session between the board and the proposal. Okay, can the public ask questions of those individual files? There is certainly nothing for the public to give you a question for you to ask them. Okay, so there's an opportunity for input. So, you, if you do the five, are they all five can we'll sit in like we did last time, or they'll no, the last we'll time it. it's a public meeting, so they all can sit in and listen to each other. Okay, so you're going to go through a process. I, I, yeah, I have mentioned to you before, there was an ex there is a sunshine or exception to that, but we elected to ignore that to have all of those 17 presentations open to the public. Right. So right now, we're continuing on that path. So if we go down the path of the last um, motion, we'd have all five come back. We'd have a question and answer with each of the five. That may, we'll come back and have to re-rank re the five at that meeting or, or later. To no less than three. To no less than three. That's one option, okay? That may give us a different ranking of those five or anything. The other option is you take the one that we've already ranked and you would go with that and have those discussions now and proceed it. The, the cost of doing all this is time. So the time factor is that we all know Boca Muni is closing a little, you know, it's targeted for June of 2019 and our goal was not to lose any of the um, players and keep an open golf course so that it's okay I mean it's up to you I, will we learn something I think we will learn something and I agree but if there's a time trade-off but well, if we brought them back and then inter interviewed them uh, and then uh, would we as Greg said rank them that evening and uh, or would we uh, come back at another meeting have the public discuss it like we like we did in this and then uh, rank them. I'm always in favor of the public input on a project of this scope. It's almost one of the largest public works projects ever undertaken in the city of Humberto. Okay. So, so if we bring, bring the architects back, uh, interview them, uh, and of course if there's any questions that the public wants us to ask, uh, uh, submit them to us. Submit them to us. And uh, then we could always, after the interviews, uh, you know, um, I guess the question is, do, do we rank them right then, or do you wait till uh, we have more public input then well, rank them? Well, you could rank them right then. Uh, right now, it is uh, 7 o'clock. We started at 5.30, so it's an hour and a half. You're probably looking at with the schedule with other items on our agendas for the month of April accomplishing the final selection in the month of May. Okay. And Craig, uh, Commissioner Aarons is correct. The time is a factor. Everybody wants a seamless yes. transition from the closure of community to the opening of the new course because it carries with us a, a financial obligation to us with regard to some of the employees. So, but two months pay in the overall scheme of things 
uh, not be uh, a long time. On the other hand, you may have five people can come in and give you the five same presentations that you heard before. If we're going to ask them questions, whether they're our own or submitted by the public, um, then they're not going to have presentations. They're going to uh, have responses to questions. But I would like to have them with those questions in hand in sufficient time so that they can give you meaningful responses. That's fine. If we submit, we submit uh, the questions to them uh, before the fact, I'm fine with that. <coughs> Harold, I'll give you an opportunity. At the municipal, at the municipal uh, the council meeting last night, the council gave GL Homes an extension. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I don't think you're aware of that, can we? Yes, it was yeah. yeah. a city request. Yeah, not, they, a, not a GL request. But doesn't that give you more time? Help us to stay open before GL Homes does work? It, it depends on a lot of factors. They're still looking, I think, at a closing in the calendar year uh, 2018, uh, shortly thereafter. I don't know what the extension time was. They, they gave an extension to, uh, for uh, additional due diligence. We're looking at seven months of design. We're probably looking at two months to three months worth of permitting. And then we're looking at probably an 18, 12 to 18 month period of time for construction. Not necessarily on the golf course. We may do it in phases to the golf course first, to the buildings afterwards, depending upon how, what the cost benefit may be in, in the construction process. Would we open the golf course prior to completion of the buildings? Osprey opened their golf course out of the trail. We could open our golf course out of the trail. It's not what we, I would like to do, because I think there is a cost benefit to bring in a general contractor to build everything all at once. And that would still take 12 to 18 months? Or yeah, that depending be upon the <coughs> type of clubhouse you're going to build, uh, restaurant facility location, and the type of facilities that ultimately you agree you want constructed on the property. We don't build much in 12 months these days. So we're looking at, if we're looking at 18 months, and we're looking at a start date, say, uh, permitting or September, September, September 18. All right, so we're already September 19. We're already looking at March of 2020. That is correct. Okay, and so um, if we move it up two months, we're still looking at January 2020. And anyway, which, which may come closer to what the closure is of uh, uh, Oka Bean. All right, what, what was the project? I thought the projected closure was June 2019. Well, we're <coughs> extending because of due diligence and issues. Well, I think we've heard from our constituents and that's what we're here for. We're here for you, so. Um. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna resubmit my motion that we shortlist uh, uh, the candidates to five and have them come in to answer specific questions that are submitted to them beforehand. The top five. The top five. And then have public comment after their presentations. Public <coughs> comment before the decision of the board. Right. Yes. yes. Now that would lead you to time perspective. You're looking at probably the first or second meeting in June. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
would be May 7th. Why can't we do it in April? Yeah. Yeah. We have an extra week in April. Yes. What? <coughs> Yeah, what about the week of the 16th? When's our regular meeting? The 16th? 16th. 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 